Awards. Um, I'm Tom Taylor. He's told you a little bit about me. And my goal tonight is not just to tell you a little bit about me, but maybe uh, share some of my story, but also share some information that I think you as future employees and business people will um, profit by. As you sit in classrooms all day studying from books and listening to lectures right now, uh, many of you are wondering, what are you going to do? And how are you going to get that job? How are you going to apply the skills that you're learning today? And I hope that um, one share will help a little bit about that. Uh, there are two paths usually that people take in their professions. Some are laser focused individuals where they, they go to college, they get their degree in three to four years, they um, jump right into internships during the summers or even in the winters, move on to master's degrees and do internships during that time, um, work their networks, their networking skills with people, and uh, move on to companies like GE, GM, Kodak, um, and make that move and stay with the company for a long time, climb up the ladder. And that works very well for some people. And then there are other people who tend to be a little, take a different route. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I call it the meandering route. I have done everything from, uh, I've been a landscaper, a laborer for landscaping. I have been on the first technical crew at Fermi Lab that built the Super Magnics back in the 70s when I was a student at Wheaton. I have worked in ministry with Youth for Christ. I have had two construction companies. One was a hardwood flooring company. One was a general contracting company. Uh, I've worked at Motorola in electronics. And I've been a manager of a candy store. I've taken a lot of different jobs that the Lord has put in my path over the years. And how did I end up owning a money management firm and a financial planning firm? Um, that's a, a little, I'll try not to make that too long of a story. Um, when I was at Wheaton, I had planned on going into the ministry. So I chose, I went to my pastor who was a, a scholar. He read from the pulpit in Greek and Hebrew fluently. He said, go to history, philosophy, or English lit, and then go to seminary. So you have a, a broad base of knowledge on which to share with people. So I took philosophy and English lit, being a little bit of an overachiever, and uh, through the process of many things, the Lord saw a different path for me in the ministry. I did work for the Youth for Christ for two years, um, but I had I was called into other areas. Uh, professional photography. Uh, when I first met Linda, I was a professional photographer and then a technical sales rep for a camera manufacturer. Um, and at that point in the late 70s, early 80s, the trades were paying the best. And it was, do I want to go on for a master's and do the business route? Or did I want to uh, make some quick money as I'm starting a new family? <coughs> so I chose um, just training in hardwood flooring, installing and sanding. And uh, before I knew it, within a year I had owned my own company, grew that, and started a second company within another five years, grew that, and uh, sold both of those. I uh, sort of burned out. I think part of what I'm going to try to share with you today is as you start this path, start to understand who you are and what your gifts are and what it is that you enjoy and are most fulfilled by. Not just what you think will get you the most money or gives you the best results in a short amount of time. Uh, I did a logic grid. I don't know if any of you have ever heard that. This comes from my philosophy background. I did a list of what am I good at, what are my gifts, and what do I enjoy doing? What am I bad at, and what do I hate doing? Now, I might be good at something, but I might hate doing it. So I looked at those skills that I had at that point in my life, and what I found, it gets right back, there's a thread throughout all of those single jobs that I had, even in the ministry, that I was a problem solver. And I loved listening to people's stories, I loved hearing where they were at and helping them to plan to get to another place. So I listened to their goals, I listened to where they were at, and I built bridges on how they could get there. And that carries through for very many jobs that you'll see as you move ahead in your professions. That's nothing more than consulting. Um, and when I learned that, 
I went to the almanac of salaries at the library, another logical move, and said, what pays the best? <laughs> Investments. So then I went out and I interviewed at a number of firms and was accepted back at Dean Litter before it became Morgan Stanley. I slowly went through my training processes and grew my skills and um, grew my book and my people skills also, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And before I knew it, I had sort of outgrown Morgan Stanley and went off on my own and started my own company. That wasn't something that was new to me. I'd already had two other companies and had been a, you know, a, a businessman for a number of years. Um, so it's just kind of a quick overview. I can uh, elaborate more in any area if people want me to, but um, I think that if I'm going to share with you what is it that you need from me, I think you need to know yourself. I need a lot of, in my, in my business, in consulting, I need a lot of men in their 40s and 50s who burn out. For years they do a job that they thought that they should have been doing because it was responsible and it paid well, but it wasn't what fulfilled them. I think you need to use your gifts that God gives you, but I think you also have to be happy in those, using those gifts. And it's essential that you spend some time with those around you to find out who you are and what, who they think you are. And then I, I recommend putting a board of advisors together. You should each have your own board of advisors, your own, just like a corporation of people who know you, mentors, professors, parents, friends, and have them sit down and talk about your little company, which is you. Um, more and more successful people are doing that today. They are sitting down and saying, this is the path I've chosen, now let's look at the pros and cons and getting wisdom and advice from other people. That's probably one of the most important things you can do as you as you step out into the, the future coming ahead of you. Um, a couple other skills that I recommend, and I'm meandering again, so this is part of my style. Um, you need to develop people skills. Some people are great talkers, and some people are very quiet, and they're very good listeners. But to be successful in business, you learn to do both. You learn to share who you are with other people and be genuine and be a good communicator in that. Doesn't have to be a good speaker, but when you sit down in front of another person, they have to know that you care about them. And you have to listen and ask good questions about who they are. If you ask people about themselves, you'll find that you can sit back and they will tell you their life story. And you will learn from every single person you ever meet whether it's a janitor or a college president. And you have something to learn from every single person you meet out there. Um, I think God puts those people in our lives. It's as much a ministry as it is um, a business decision or just a social decision. So those are skills that I really recommend that you work at. And some people develop those skills through speaking in public. Others through, I would recommend learning how to network. Now, have you taught networking at all in these classes in bed? It's for seniors. Have you? Seniors. Okay, all right. Um, I've done a little bit of teaching on networking at Chambers of Commerce. I've spoken at Rotary Clubs. And um, when you get into the business world, people are always clamoring to get more business. And right now, you're at the point where you're clamoring to get contacts for new jobs or to get accepted